Please welcome When Women Thrive leader, Pam Jeffords. Good morning, good morning. Um, after slow progress, like excruciatingly slow progress, uh, we're here today because there is an inflection point and we're sitting in the epicenter right now. And as we look at and we talk about an inflection point, I've often had people say, well, it's just the intersection of all of that stuff we just saw. And we said, actually, it's not. It's, there's a difference between an inflection point and an intersection point. And clearly, we've had a lot of painful stories shared this last year that have intersected. And we do believe that you are all sitting in the epicenter of the change. But that inflection point is important because we can go one of two ways. We can either take those painful stories and press for progress, as today is International Women's Day, and press for progress is the uh, challenge for us all, or we can let this slide away. And there's a, probably a pretty 50-50 debate on which way we're gonna go. And those of you in the room, many of you in the room, are storytellers. And so we're excited to be here because we do believe that you have an opportunity to create these stories and paint a new picture. Um, for me, five generations from Louisiana, the storytelling is part of my life. Uh, and actually, it's the same stories over and over that we always told. Every Thanksgiving, it was the same story. And my mom used to always say, you know, Pam, the way that you can get by with a really good story, one that you can tell every single time, and people will always laugh, is to stay in the shallow end of the pool. She'd always say, the shallow end of the pool, we're from Louisiana, it's always a, a, a pool bar. There's always music. There's always, you know, laughter. And she'd always say, when you're telling a story, don't go in the deep end. The deep end is very scary. Nobody wants to go there. It's not fun. Stay in the shallow end of the pool. And so I've left Louisiana, but I haven't left storytelling, and I love telling stories. Um, my, my mom got it almost right. It is about telling fun, light stories. We call them anecdotes, hypotheses of what's going on. But you do have to go to the deep end of the pool occasionally and pull through the proof of what's actually working. And sometimes, more importantly, the proof of what's not working. And so what we're doing at Mercer these last uh, five years now is we're going back and forth. So you'll see throughout the day, we'll tell some stories, we'll share anecdotes, we'll share hypotheses, but then we're gonna pull back and talk to you about the data. What is the data telling us? What's actually working? And again, sometimes more importantly, what's not working? And so you're gonna see this kind of thread back and forth throughout the day. And it's important because as you start to talk to middle managers, and as you're gonna hear over in one of our pods about this kind of silent middle, um, they're not super excited about the anecdotes and the hypothesis. They do wanna see the proof of what's happening. So you have to kind of embed both of these together. Um, and, and you're also gonna see a theme as our CEO, Julio Portolatane, said on, at the World Economic Forum in January. Um, this is not gonna be rocket science that you're seeing around the room. This is simply pay attention science. And pay attention in the right way. So you're gonna hear later from Pat Milligan, who's the leader of our organization, and she shared a little bit uh, in the quote here, that if you can do it with an, an intentional voice, meaning if you can look at diversity and inclusion the same way you look at any other core business process, whether it's a sales process, producing a movie, a supply chain, tech, with the same diligence, then we can actually uh, make progress. So by show of hands, how many of you in the room are HR professionals, like day-to-day -day HR? Okay, so less than about 20%. Um, five years ago, gosh, probably one year ago, this room would have been 100% HR. This room would have been 100% men. There might have been a man coming up to introduce it and then leave. Um, that was the extent. So we've come a long way to where we do have men engaged. And we have, as Pat mentioned in the opening remark, this is not an HR issue. This is a business issue. So the fact that we are less than 20% HR leaders is a very powerful statement that, again, I think is what's going to boost us and you know, push for progress. 